It is the question no one has been able to answer for the past four years. What happened to Relisha Rudd? So there's an Amber Alert out there for this eight-year-old girl. Her name is Relisha Rudd. She's from Southeast DC. Where is she? Pray for us. Help me get my daughter back home safely. The FBI just released a chilling surveillance tape of Relisha and 51-year-old Khalil Tatum walking down the interior hallway of the Holiday Inn Express. She was with him for a lot of times when he brought her back. Is she still alive? That's the, one of the facts that's like, oh my gosh, there's something really wrong here. Bring her home! What new information do investigators have today they didn't have back then? Social workers went to the shelter and figured out it was all a lie. Uh, this discovery was a shock um, for us. Uh, we were um, very focused on finding Relisha. Do you think Relisha's alive? Yeah. Why do you think that? I always have strong hopes. You can't never let yeah. your hopes down. And today marks four years since DC police started looking for Relisha. She's the eight year old girl who disappeared back in 2014 from the district's largest family homeless shelter in Southeast. What you just heard is a sample of a new podcast from WUSA 9. It's called 18 Days. Our anchor, Jan Jeffcoat, and producer Dory Olmos have been working on this project for many months. The podcast takes a closer look at Relisha's disappearance. You've got video of uh, uh, the hotel that everybody's seen, you know, a number of times, but you've gone oh, further yeah. than that. You, you've got video you're telling me about that nobody has seen. What is right. this? So there's the surveillance video that really haunted all of us. I mean, all, all, all walking everybody. Walking down the hallway. Yeah, I mean, you see Relisha and Khalil Tatum walking down this hallway together, right. and that was the only piece of video the FBI ever released. Right. But that wasn't the last piece of video that police have of her. So that was February 26th, that video, that surveillance video. There's also this separate piece of surveillance video from March 1st, okay? And that was the last time they believe she was ever seen alive. That video was taken from a different motel across the street from the one where we saw that surveillance video, right? Did you try to get that video? So we tried to get that video. We, we did this Freedom of Information Act, which for the media means that we're trying to get it because we believe it's part of a story that we're working on right. that we believe the public should see. And the FBI uh, sent us back a note saying they were not going to release any more video because it was still part of an active investigation. What's interesting is, is that the very first surveillance video uh, of her um, at the Holiday Inn Express, I had to go there. I had to see for it myself, you know, why it was this particular hotel that he took her to. And so my producer and I, we actually gained access inside this hotel. We walked in it, we looked at it, and there was something very revealing about that hotel that has a connection to uh, the homeless shelter that we didn't know before. And that's in the so, podcast. And that's in the podcast. We talk all about that. And then that was when we then learned that this other piece of video that's still out there that no one's ever seen from March 1st uh, was from a motel right across the street from. And it's the FBI that, don't, that won't let you see this that's video right. part the of the FBI investigation. Has the, right, it's still part of the investigation. Right. I think uh, one of the most important people we talked to was uh, Bob Lowry. He is the uh, vice president of the Missing Children's Division at the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children right here in our area. He told us and gave us a clearer picture of what kind of they've been doing and how they've been involved in the search for Relisha Rudd since almost from day one. I mean, they were what does they he think? pretty much. It's in the podcast, but I will say this. There is a good reason why he does not believe that she was sex trafficked. So um, on one hand, you know, we kept talking about whether or not she might have been sex trafficked right. and who, who would know that, who would have that information. And um, he gave me a very good explanation as to why they do not believe that's the case. You can listen to episode one of 18 Days right now on SoundCloud. Just go to WUSA9.com slash 18 Days. It's going to be available on iTunes soon, and we're going to let you know, of course, when that happens. Stay with us.